more minutes for people to show. But I think today is a pretty busy day for people. Uh, I spoke to five people already today, uh, and um, those five people are off island or uh, too busy to, to make it to the, the meeting today. Probably because of the rain, right? It's too rainy to be in a Zoom call. Is there a severe lag? Because I don't hear anything on your end. Everybody's muted. Nobody else is talking, that's all. Oh, okay. So we have, uh, you said Glenn and Ray? And Patrick. And Patrick, okay. What does my name show up as? Does it show my phone number or anything? Yeah, it's just your phone number. And I hope it's okay. I brought a guest to a member of the no. board. Of course. Well, okay, it's uh, officially five minutes past the hour. This is Maurice calling in. Um, so sorry, I can't see any of you or, uh, and you can't see me. Um, Melina, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself and, and your guest. You can see if people are paying attention. Hard to tell, everybody's videos are off. Um, hi, my name is Melina, founder and president of Ulana. Aloha. I've brought Myliv Corpman with me. She's a member of the board of directors of Ulana. Um, I guess a little bit about myself. I was born in Iran and then my family had to escape to move um, our family. It was religious persecution. We were basically getting death threats. And so we ended up in Hawaii, in Hilo. We moved here when I was five. And the reason why I share that is because it's also, I guess being um, pushed out of my home country by my own people and then being like, with a warm embrace brought in by the Hawaiian culture. So it's like near and dear to my heart. And that was the beginning of just my desire to perpetuate the Hawaiian culture. Um, I fell into museum studies when I actually left Hawaii and I was volunteering in Israel at the Baha'i World Center. And there there's historic holy places of the Baha'i faith. And I saw firsthand how people would get like a tangible reaction when they learn more about the history of the faith that they love. And so when I came home, I just putting that concept together of like the more a person knows about their history and where they're from, it really makes a difference. You know? um, and then learning more about museum studies and how that can have an impact on communities. So that's what took me into the field. Um, initially, to be honest, so I, when I was studying museum collections, management and care, I was also learning about how to open up a museum and living in Hilo, we don't, we have, we have museums, but there are a lot of them have very specific niches and areas uh, that they look at. And I was really hoping to have something a bit more holistic of both, not just the Hawaiian culture, and also we have so many other beautiful cultures that live here. 
um, and also to provide a space to give access to more education and access to other cultures here in Hilo. Um, so that was when I, Lulana was birthed. I guess we, I would talk to friends about it. At first it was a, in a joking manner of like, let's just open a museum. <laughs> and it just, all the doors just keep opening. So we're continuing to pursue this. January of last year, we received our 501c3. So we are officially incorporated and we were scheduled to have a, like a pop-up museum, given the fact that we don't have a brick and mortar structure yet. Uh, it was going to be at Mokupa Papa in downtown. And then with COVID hitting, we've transitioned everything online. So we do have a website up and we do have access to the exhibits, I guess you would call it online. I'm not sure what else we would call them. We have two ongoing ones at the moment and they're being released in phases. So we have one that began with the Ohia tree and just educating a bit more about rod and what people can do to help. And um, we have another one partnering with Pumu Kamalani Johnson, where we are looking at a mo'olalo that talks about different parts of moku, of moku okeave, and um, learning about basically famous sayings that we all know and use, but really going back to what is the, the story behind that saying. Um, that took about five minutes and I'm supposed to talk for 15, 20 minutes, Maurice. <laughs> so um, tell me, um, who, who is involved in um, curating the, the exhibits and deciding who, uh, what, what you're going to focus on for what period of time, besides yourself? Well, besides myself, there is, uh, we do have a board of directors and at the moment there are eight women that are all in their own ways dedicated to the community and as well as the Hawaiian culture. Um, you can see who those folks are on our website. I could, I guess, share my screen and go through the website as well. Should I do that? Oh, yeah, feel free if you'd like to. Okay, let's. And then at one point, um, I know you were talking, um, you know, when you first um, told me about this idea, um, as you're writing your bylaws and, and all that for the, the nonprofit, um, you said that you wanted to have the museum here in Hilo, of brick and mortar. And I was wondering, um, how far along did you get in, um, in securing a site? Um, what obstacles you know, um, are currently in your way, what obstacles, um, you know, beyond COVID, you know, and um, what you think your time frame is, uh, what your budget needs are, et cetera. And um, how many people you might employ there. It's lots of questions. Um, so, The time frame that we have in terms of getting a brick and mortar is three to five years of a location. And the challenge has just been finding a suitable location. Um, we have already begun to receive funding and that's, you know, like startup funds and getting um, all of the content. The goal is to also have it all in Olelo Hawaii. And so the website itself, a lot of the content is already translated um, and we want to continue to have all of the exhibits both in English and in Olelo Hawaii. That's a um, bit of a priority for us. Um, in terms of, what else? Um, employment, I mean, those, those things will, will, will get there. <laughs> At the moment we do have all the members of the board volunteer their time and um, and resources. We've been also collaborating with a few artists to be able to 
get content into art. We do have um, in our first exhibit, we are we have some coloring pages. We wanted to have some things that families can print at home. So under the Ohia, we've been able to team up with Solomon Enos and he's created some beautiful coloring pages. And so we're hoping to continue to have more and more just collaborations with different artists. And so we can have resources available for families at home um, until we are able to get a physical space. The thing with the physical space, so personally, when I've growing up, I probably shouldn't admit this, but growing up, I used to find museums a bit boring just because it's so like stale. <laughs> just like, I don't know, just kind of, yeah, stale is a word that comes to mind. So I would really, the vision is for this to not be that and to really have it interactive and to really, to be able to like interact more with the objects and not to, the goal isn't to like hide things into storage. Well, I understand conservators desire to like properly store and preserve things for generations to come. At the same time, it's like, well, what? We also need to learn from these objects to be able to like pass on the like the knowledge um, and to have a really interactive dynamic space which of course COVID creates some challenges but I mean that's not going to be around forever and we can adjust things and have things you know socially distanced and safe and all that but um, yeah so the vision is is more for a space for the community like a space where come and go and it's like continually changing perhaps we would have some permanent exhibits but to have like rotating exhibits and highlighting art from the community and yeah and just having workshops and just things like that so we're with covid we've been we've pivoted to have things more accessible online but the long-term goal is is to have a hybrid of both both a physical space and i think Online, we see there's a lot of good from that. So we'll probably do a hybrid. So I don't know if that answers all your questions. Uh, I, I think so. Um, you said three to five years for brick and mortar is your, your goal. Yes. Um, so are you fully financed for that now? Or how far short of your finance goals are you? Is that by Not year yet. or? We are, we are a couple years short of that. However, we also, I mean, I have a meeting this week with a member of one of the foundations um, that they, they provide a lot of funding for capital. So I'll have a better idea after that meeting, but um, uh, yeah. So at the moment we have received three grants, but like I said, it's, some of it has been set aside for capital needs in the future, and some of it is being used for translators and artwork and things like that. So, if you would like to donate, what kind of, what kind uh, of, yeah, how 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 do we donate if you? So, if folks, so if you're still looking at my screen um, on our website. Oh yeah, what are you what are you showing? You, you so have to describe I've, it to me. Sometimes. I've been showing like the homepage and one of the, the um, so we have two exhibits. One is Pulama, which there's going to be a series of exhibits under that umbrella title. And Pulama is things that we cherish. And Pana Hawaii, which is the one I was sharing about the Mo'olalo that goes around Hawaii Island. Um, so this is on the website and I showed the coloring pages that you can go and just download from the website. And then at the top, there's also a donate button. So it, you can donate by clicking the button and that I believe goes through PayPal or checks can be mailed to on the addresses on the, on the page there. Um, Do you accept cryptocurrencies? Not yet, but we can figure out how to, if you would like to. <laughs> First, I got to figure out how to buy them. It's pretty oh. hard on Hawaii. You got this. Yeah. Do you want to take us through the, um, the website at all anymore? Is there anything else? 
Um, was there? Uh, sure, sure. So this again, Pulama, like I mentioned, this is that will have a several series of exhibits under that. And the first four, we are looking at four plants and that is called Mina Mina. So the end of, we've already published um, the Ohia content. By the end of this month, we will have one about Hala. And with all of them, they have sub subsections. We go through the significance. Um, why is this plant important? Why do we care? There's some videos. And with all of them, we like to begin with some Olelo no Eao to bring back just, you know, like that's a nice source of mm, knowledge. It's a, yeah. And if you notice the coloring pages also have a relevant no AL together with them. Um, then we go through the uses of the plant that we're looking at. Why is this of use? All of the implications, and then we go through the threat. So with Ohia specifically, we learn about rapid Ohia death and what are the implications if we are to lose the Ohia trees. And then there's a section about how to help because we don't want people to look at this and just feel sad and leave hopeless. <laughs> so we do, for all of them, have a section of how you can help and ways to prevent the spread, for example. And then in the resources page is where we had a screening with um, filmmaker, author Tom Kaufman about a documentary called May Earth Live. It's about, it's a little over 10 years old, but I think a lot of the information is still very much relevant for today. And coloring pages and some more resources, um, educational material. And we are going to have a gallery of art highlighting artists from around Hawaii. And then we have the Pana Hawaii section, as I was mentioning. And again, all of this is both, I should have had it in both. Um, so you can select up at the top what language you would like to view the website in. Um, as I, so this Molelo is taken out of a one named Kamiki, which was published back in 1914. And so we go around the different moku. So far we have three of the moku published or districts. The first one beginning with Hilo Hanakahi. And if you would like, you can also listen to the Molelo in Olelo Hawaii by just clicking on the, the play button and it goes roughly like paragraph by paragraph. And then with these mo'olelo, you can also download the content. It's also the way uh, Kumu Kamalani has organized this. You see how some of them are underlined. We have a way to um, learn about what the words mean. So it's also a nice way to learn if you're trying to strengthen your, your speaking skills and on the Mo'olelo Hawaii, and you can download the entire Mo'olelo in both English or Hawaiian, and as well as this, what we're looking at with the vocabulary words. So we are trying to provide resources for folks to be able to use at home. Yeah, it sounds like a great learning center. It's a goal. Yeah, thanks. I would imagine once um, you know we're past this COVID thing, uh, and you you do get the brick and mortar going up, this would be you know also a great place for uh, tourists to to come and learn more about the Hawaiian culture. But uh, definitely um, for our local people to to learn quite a bit. I wonder, um, do you um, do you have any ideas for um, future permanent installments? We have lots of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Any um, you would like to discuss? 
should go back to my fun notebook. But um, one one that I think would be personally that I want is well. Okay, this is where I'm just gonna like kind of jump around because I get excited thinking about this. But so like for a permanent, I would want something for the historical like pre-contact Hawaii up until like kingdom days. And also to have it be historically accurate and really show all the sides. Cause I remember seeing one exhibit where they kind of went through that same time frame and they didn't mention anything about the overthrow. And I was like, how can you have an exhibit about this and not talk about such an important part of the history? Um, so I think that would be kind of a, and with that, I mean, it's visually kind of similar to like, I don't know, growing up here and seeing Herb Kana's um, drawings to have like, to bring the the gods and goddesses to life in that sense, in a visual way. Um, rotating would be, you know, the various art of various artists around Hawaii. Um, and ideally like the, 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 the space itself like we'd be able to have gardens where we would plant the native plants and like a garden of plants that has dyes and then you learn how to use the dyes to beat kapha and then you like actually paint with those, um, eat the food that comes like that you grow and have a perhaps like building a hale in that traditional style but it's also a process where it's used as educating and not just something we build and people go sit under, but like having, so everything like using the whole process of bringing it to fruition as a process of educating as well, to be able to pass that knowledge on. Um, yeah. So how big of a, a space would you need? Um, And this, I mean, so I'm, I'm picturing something that grows organically. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily going to start off huge, but um, how big of a space? Initially, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to, it's, you mean like acreage or like square footage? Yeah, I mean, acreage or, or square footage, either way, like if you know, like you definitely will need a building approximately, you know, so many square feet on so many acres or because I, I know you're talking about gardening and growing food as well. So yeah. you have a building up your sleeve, you're gonna no. <laughs> I, I, I do not, but, uh, you know, maybe Pat or Glenn do. Oh. Um. With the ideas of like having garden and the structure itself, I mean, at least to start off, I would start with like half an acre, I would think, to be able to have a structure as well as some some garden space, and then take it from there. Um, there's been a few ideas as well. Like I've been given some suggestions as to, because Hilo has so many historic buildings and sites and if those can be refurbished to be used as a museum space. So that's an idea of being explored. Um, I have, I'm blanking, I mean I've calculated the square footage numbers and I have it in a document but I don't want to take the time to look for the document to give you an exact number but I can email it to you later if you like. Yeah, no, I, I was just curious. You don't have to be specific. We're not uh, going to be grading you on this later. <laughs> I know. The pop quiz question. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I had a comment first. So um, your website is so, so very impressive. I mean, you guys did an unbelievable job. And the fact that you already have it as virtual, engaging, dynamic, interactive, you're so ahead of the game. 
I mean, all of us are all trying to desperately catch up and you're already there. So how long did it take you to create that? And how many people did it take to, you know, get all of the information? That's very encouraging. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Well, it took us, um, in terms of, so it took us a couple months of research and the research was myself and two others on the board that were like, actually like reading books and trying to like actually get the information. Um, we also had, so on top of the three of us, there were two others that were just giving us suggestions and feedback in terms of what to include. These are all members of the board. And then, so that took about, spent about three months of actively doing that. And then myself and I had a friend that lives in the mainland that helped with actually the web, I had started the web design, but I have limited knowledge with that. So we did have a friend that volunteered her time to actually help take the website to a bit of a next level. And we spent about two months to get it to where it's at. Wow, that is amazing, two months. I mean, it looks like years <laughs> of gathering information. Oh, what is your background? Which background, like education? Yeah, your educational background or what gives you the life experience to be able to deliver something of such uh, high quality and complexity. I mean, just the information that you're putting out there is amazing. Thank you. Um, my life is so I, what did I, I, I went to, so for college, I went to University of Hawaii at Manoa because I ended up so I grew up in Hilo, but then I ended up, my family moved to Lanai in high school. So from Lanai, I went to Oahu for college. And I was actually pre-med. I always thought growing up, I, I knew I wanted to help people. I just didn't know what that meant or how. And so my default was all a doctor helps people. So growing up, I always thought maybe I would be a doctor. But the more I learned about it, I went to OCAM and did all that. And I was like, I'm not cut out for medical school. And then when I went to Israel, I think maybe it was before you joined the call. I was volunteering. Yeah, I was volunteering at the Baha'i World Center. That I, and it's, it, that was where I fell into museum studies and preventive conservation. And so from there, that opened the door to just museum studies and learning about just history and how important it is to know about history and objects and how objects can help translate history to real life. Um, so from there, when I came home, I finally came home to Hilo about six years ago. And I didn't want to leave again, but I did want to continue my studies in museum studies. So I did an online course through George Washington. And at the same time, I was asked to travel through the South Pacific. I've traveled quite extensively, like Kiribati, Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, um, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, and in those places too, being able to visit their museums and just seeing, learning about their cultures and broadening my own horizons of Hawaii within the context of the Pacific and just how interrelated we all are. Um, and I think that also sparked the name of Ulana with that symbolism of as, as we're weaving and learning about the different cultures, we still see the individual strands that you see in a, in a piece that's woven, but as it's brought about together, it creates that you know, so I think it's also a, a space that creates unity by sharing that sort of are you already collaborating with with others like you know Kamehameha schools um OHA um not, Department of Education not in an official sense um we do I've started dialogue with a teacher at, <laughs> at Kamehameha schools um 
So it's not with the official institution, but there's also actually a member of our board was also come at most schools. Um, so we haven't gotten to that official level. I think that's definitely a goal that we would like to. Um, yeah, I mean, I, um, <laughs> I will totally connect them with you guys. I mean, okay. you're doing such important work and um, I agree, museums, they're normally like, um, yeah, stale is one is one word, but um, also they just make you feel like you're in an old place where just going through the website as you did, it's innovative, it's intriguing. So you want to get to the next page, you know, I mean, those drawings, girl. <laughs> Gosh, those, I mean, people will pay for those, you know, to have their kids of color that. I mean, heck, I need some stress relief. I will color those. So I'm just thinking, like, who is the wind beneath your wings to lift you guys? Because this kind of work coming out of Hilo, holy cow. <laughs> I mean, talk about making um, your mark. And I don't want to totally um, monopolize the whole conversation, but the work that you folks are doing, I mean, even Department of Hawaiian Homelands, they would totally get behind this too. There's just, there's so many um, Hawaiian um, entities that uh, could get behind such legitimate work that you folks are doing that anyway, I, I was just asking because it's um, even the Department of Education uh, would not have the depth of knowledge that you folks are putting out. And I mean, like, and I can go and log on for free and go get that. So, I mean, um, and I'm also part of the Native Hawaiian Chamber of Commerce. So they would just love this. They would love this in like a thousand different ways. So I will send you an email. My name is Lani. You see it there. I wanted to know, um, I work with Hawaii Care Choices Hospice. So I wanted to know within your uh, museum, if there's going to be any part that does Native Hawaiian healing or Native Hawaiian health that, you know, shows what um, back in the day they used to do, because that would be so amazing to bring that forward. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Mylan, did you want to add something? Oh no, this is all really good questions. Sorry. Um, Aloha, I'm Maile. I'm part of the board and I'm sorry it's just through voice. Um, but all of those questions are great and you are such a great inspiration to us as well. Um, working with people and um, just opening up and collaborating with not just the Native Hawaiian um, communities, but also those big organizations that can help us and can be behind us. And, and you know, somebody we can lean on because that question that you just posed, who do we lean on or who, who gives us our wings right now? It's just us, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's just us. And so having that backing and having the collaboration, working with the community, the Department of Education and teachers, teachers are at the forefront right now. They really, really are. And I mean, much aloha goes out to them. Yeah, mahalo. So thank you so much um, for your comments. The reason I say that is because there's going to be people that wanna fly your banner big time. And it's because, you know, they don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the knowledge, all of that. Um, but they want to promote something that is so good um, like this. Like I see, um, I, I graduated from Komemia and um, Pat, who also graduated from Komemia. So Pat, what do you think? I mean, what kind of um, impact would, would this have on our community? What do you think? Hopefully he's not on a phone call. Everyone is doing this um, out of work, so we'll see. But anyway, um, yeah, I would if I'll definitely reach out to you folks because um, this kind of important work, it's like you just threw the pedal. I mean the the pebble in the in the pond, and now these ripples, these ripples are going to make the difference, and it's so exciting. I mean, I see I see Tracy on the call too. Tracy, are you there? Are you um, behind your screen? You know why, like I told you, everybody's working while they're doing this. So, um, oh, maybe she's not unmuting. 
anyway, not to like totally just take the whole thing away from Maurice as he's talking. I'm just, I'm just blown away when I'm seeing all the stuff that you're sharing. I'm glad that you did share your website because then it shows how much um, information that you folks have already brought together and that um, you folks are ahead of the game largely because you set it uh, on virtual to begin with, where all of us are just, you know, scraping and grabbing any um, part of virtual world that we can. And, but we're coming from behind where you guys are already there. So yeah, I'm sure that the journey has been um, a challenging one uh, along the way, but gosh, it is not without uh, success that I watched this and thinking, whoa, how did Maurice find you? <laughs> yay, <laughs> yay, that's awesome. Right. Anyway, um, we would, that, we would that, that's all of my you. comment. Thank you. We would love and appreciate to be in touch with you. So really, thank you so much. Yeah, I will send you, I will send you an email right after this for sure. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, Lonnie, for your inspirational words and and uh, um, encouragement. Um, you know, I know there are times when, um, you know, Lena, when she was starting this, coming into roadblocks and just the lengthy mm -hmm. process to, to get through everything is, you know, it's such a, a great thing to see that you're up and going now, um, you know, virtually. And uh, I'm excited to see um what it's going to look like once it's brick and mortar so but yeah much needed effort in the community um are there other questions from anybody else we don't mean to shut anybody else out we have lots of time still Well, I can't see what anybody's doing, so I'm going to take that as as a no. <laughs> uh, my life, is there so anything I, that you would I, like I, to add? Oh, hello, sorry, yeah. Well, ahead, I just Ellen. wanted to ask um, if they could put if they could put their contact um, information on the chat so we can get it. Yes. Whoever wants to put oh, yeah. whoever wants to put it, then we'll pick it up. Oh, and Patrick, oh. Is, he was out with a customer. Mahalo, he loves the website. Okay, yeah, yeah that's what I was telling you. Everybody is working, but we're we're trying to listen halfway too. Well, okay, we were, good. You're going to put your contact information in. I'll put, did I also put my number? And the website address. There's the email phone number and the website on the in the chat. And um, your phone number is it a cell number? Yes. Okay, perfect. Text anytime. No. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time, you folks. Thank to you come for, on and share with us. Thank you for having yes. me. Thank you. Miley, was there anything that you wanted to add? Is there anything you... Uh... No, but uh, maybe one thing um, also, um, I, I know Melina and she does great work. The, the one thing I, will, I do want to emphasize on is I can appreciate how Melina is, and yes, I'm part of the board, but Melina is the forefront in this. And I can appreciate how she just has this honest to goodness, wanting to know the culture appropriating way about doing stuff. You know, she's very, she'll dig into that like so deep and that's what I can appreciate. And that's why even more, I wanna be a part of this and I wanna see like, to what extent and 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 the grand stage that this all can you know be lifted up to and and thank you Melina thank you I never say it so thank you Aww. <laughs> um, 
Have you folks well, you spoken guys. to Emi Loa as well? Not yet. Okay. Well, when I when I connect with you, I'll I'll give you all of the names because man, you guys are you guys are something, boy. You guys are something special. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard not to just want to hog you all to Hilo, <laughs> but I mean, um, what you guys are bringing, you guys are bringing to to a global stage, and that's and that's how wide um, it has to be. So whether or not you get to a brick and mortar eventually. Um, you are not um, bound and limited by any four walls at all, which is even more exciting because that's the way the website is set up. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. I just love it. I love it. I love you. Anyway, I look forward. <laughs> it's so encouraging because like being in the thick of it, there's moments where I'm like, is this even useful? Like what are we even doing? Oh, yeah. So it's just really encouraging. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Melina, Molly, if you guys ever have doubt, I think you just need to call up Lonnie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such a great motivator. <laughs> and, yeah, for sure. Oh, Lonnie, speed dial, Melina. Lonnie, <laughs> <on> speed dial. <laughs> And you have an extra special place in my heart because my father had to go through hospice last year when he passed. And the, oh. everybody was just so loving and so sweet and just really helped that transition time like to such a, like we couldn't have gone through it without you folks. So thank you on that note. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's great. What a great um, connection. Yeah, yeah. Who else is uh, on the call? We have, I know, Glenn, Pat, Lonnie, Tracy, Malay, Melina. Is there anybody else? Not that I see. I don't see anybody else. Okay, just just checking. I, I always put it down for records, but um, so um, I want to thank you guys for coming and, and speaking, and uh, we go through our, our regular rotary business usually first, but we started with you guys. You're welcome to, to stay, it's not long. Uh, first, um, I wanna open up for happy dollars and put in 10 happy dollars today. Um, this will go to um, our foundation. Um, and uh, happy for uh, Melina, you agreeing to come and, and speak. And, uh, and for Lonnie, your enthusiasm. And Miley, thank you for joining Melina. Uh -huh. um, yeah, this is really, really wonderful and it really made it a, a great meeting, even though it's very small. I, I, I love meetings that end up like this. So thank you, you definitely made my day. Thank you. And um, you. I don't know if anybody else is listening, but this is when you put in money, happy dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Glenn said a hundred. Is that did I hear right? Glenn for a hundred dollars. Okay, I'll put him down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you didn't say no, that's a yes, right? Okay, Glenn for a hundred. <laughs> um, okay, since nobody else is is speaking up, uh, we'll move on to our announcements. Uh, we only have a few. Uh, Keith, I think, I'm not sure he finished his pets training, but he did at least the first part of it uh, this weekend. I think there's a second part towards the end of this month. Um, I'm sure it went well. I'm very sorry for him that he's not able to do it in person with everyone else because it's really nice to, to meet with people, and especially after um, after the, the education you get all day, usually the after hours is where you really get to meet people and mingle and get to know people. So um, I know they had that kind of uh, component to it virtually, but you know, virtual is hard. So hopefully uh, he'll have an opportunity to redo that or uh, you know, get to meet people at the next di district conference because hopefully next year our district conference will be um, in person. So if you haven't heard, this year's district conference will be virtual, as will the International Rotary Conference. Um, 
but Keith also is planning in um, a community service event. Uh, it'll be uh, with Hawaiian Wildlife Life uh, Foundation doing a beach cleanup in April. I believe that was April 26. Um, I'll have to check with him. We'll definitely have an email going out about that. So everyone will get to hear an opportunity uh, to, to volunteer down there. Of course, social distancing and mask wearing will be a must. Um, then as far as our district grant goes, um, that project is moving forward. I'm not sure if we lost you. But I don't, I don't hear you. He said he was out in Mountain View. We might have lost him. Is everybody gone? Just the leader, Maurice, is gone. So I don't know. I should end the meeting. Um, Tracy, are you there? Anybody there? Yeah, just end the meeting. Maurice says he's sorry. He's supposedly still connected, but I think we can. Say goodbye. Oh, he's back. Oh, hey. You're back. Okay, so I don't know where I I don't know where I trailed off. I, I was connected the whole time on my end. I don't know. Oh, I blame I blame uh, the weather. Everybody's gone. We just have Ray and me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, <laughs> It's almost one o'clock and, and I don't have anything else to say. So, but uh, thank you again so much for. Thank you for having us. Uh, attending. Yeah, really a, a pleasure. Um, I assume you're recording this because I'd set it up to record if you logged yeah. into my account. Okay, yeah. great. I'll have to get that from you. Um, I could just bring over a thumb drive or something or next time you're in either way. Sounds good. But um, thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. You too. Be dry. All right. Hello. Uh -huh. All right. Try.